you cannot be genuinely connected to this commission and not reflect the blessings of the house. The life that flows in a tree is the same that flows through the branches. As long as the branches remain connected, the flow is natural and is automatic. The flow is natural and is automatic. You are connected to any spiritual tree. Whatever obtains in that tree is ordained to be manifest in your life. You can't look for Kennedy again and not find him in me. Why? Connectivity. That's not a makeup. That's real. You can't check out on Copeland and not find him in me. Connectivity. 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 By the grace of election, this is one of the leading ministries of Christ on the earth today. One of the many, 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 many. But thank God we are one of the ministries of Christ without any iota of doubt. Jesus manifests himself here naturally, always late. 40 years unabated. There is a treasure for you in the house. Now, may you receive grace to be truly connected so that the reflection of this house will be all over your life. When you're on board any flight, it's your natural right to assess whatever is served on board. But if you are a tout, the fly leaves you on the ground. You can't be served what they serve on board. But when you are on board, it's your natural right. In fact, you have a bed by your side. You can call them at any time. They can't say, why are you calling me all the time? You call them as many times as the flight is on. Come, bring juice. Which kind? How many do you have? I say orange, bring orange. Do you have apple? Bring apple. Ah, you alone? No. What more? You have pineapple? Bring pineapple. It's your right. It's paid for. Already paid for. Already paid for. Already paid for. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, whatever blessings obtained in this house are yet to be made manifest in your life. Today is your day of release. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and get seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, our prophetic focus for the month is empowered to go about my father's business. Wish you know that I should be about my father's business? Jesus said in Luke chapter 2 verse 49, and Paul, the apostle, a man of great depth. He said in Romans 12 and verse 11, he said, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. Is defined as business. 
by Jesus himself and through the revelation of the Holy Spirit through Paul the Apostle. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all his commandments which are commanded this day, if you shall business likely hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, not casually, observe to do what he tells you to do, that the Lord will set you on high above all nations of the earth. That's how viable that business is. He's able to set a nobody above all the nations of the earth. So serving God is a most lucrative business in every sense of the world. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. You shall not be barren or cast young in the land. And the number of your days I will fulfill. <laughs> what a business. What a lucrative engagement. I will bless your bread and your water. You never beg. His blessings make it rich. And has no sorrow. I will enrich your bread and your water. You will eat what you want. I will take sickness away from your body. That's not found anywhere. There is no such uh, condition of service anywhere that I will take sickness away from you. They will manage your sickness. And if you are not well on time, they send you out of the business. That shall not cast your young, nor be barren in the land as part of your returns for serving me. None of your efforts will be aborted. <laughs> your business won't close down. Yeah. Your body will not be barren. Yeah. The plague of miscarriage will be over. Yeah. And the number of your days I will fulfill. Yeah. What a deal. And he empowers us to tap into all of those blessings that accrue only to those who serve him. One can beg and then sometimes doors of mercy will come. But serving him is a covenant that commits his integrity to make them happen. Thank you, Jesus. Our teaching series for our Sunday services is captioned engaging the manifestations of the Holy Spirit for supernatural breakthroughs. Please hear me. Spiritual virtues are ordained to impart on every aspect of human life. They are not just church issues. They are real life assets. Now watch. South Korea was one of the poorest nations in the world in 1945. A revival hit that land, a great prayer revival. You have prayer mountains almost everywhere. Great churches erupted from it. And by 1985, it became the 13th industrialized nation of the world. Skyscrapers everywhere. People speaking in tongues everywhere. My God. From near number last to number 13 in the 200 there about nations of the world. It impacts on every aspect of life. Talking about the later in he said, they shall build the old ways. <laughs> Transformation. Massive, physical, feasible, touchable transformations. They shall repair the waste cities. 
the desolation of many generations. Strangers will stand to feed their flock. The sons of the aliens shall be their plowmen and their what? Wine dressers. They'll be employed foreign labor. My God. That's how practical spiritual virtues are. They impart practically on every aspect of life. People think they're just religious things that only happen to people spiritually. <laughs> the manifestations of the spirit is given to every man to profit with First Corinthians 12 and verse 7. Now, think of Nigeria. During the oil boom, the church was undergoing an economic doom. As poor as church right was the proverb, and they are right. Church was the poorest human society in the country. And then the revival broke out, sir. Mm. And things began to change. Now the church has suddenly become the envy of the land. Come and give the Lord praise. That's how transformational every move of the spirit is. Go outside there and see cars. <laughs> there were no car parks designed for churches in those days. I'm in that business. Because nobody's coming to park cars here. Now you are bringing three cars from one family. How dare you? <laughs> Amen. Everything began to turn. And now the church is leading education in Nigeria. Yes. The church could not boast of running a primary school successfully yes. in those days. Now you are running universities. About 68 yes. universities in Nigeria are church built. Hallelujah. That's how transformational every move of the spirit can be. And yet, we have not seen anything. Because many, many global phenomenons will keep rising in the body of Christ Amen. and in this church. Amen. I believe. Men and women here will be invited to solve problems for nations of the world. So wake up. A revival is not a spiritual thing. It's a life transformational thing. Ezekiel 37 and verse 10. <laughs> and I prophesied as I was commanded. And breath came into them. And they lived and stood upon their feet and exceeding Great army. That's the product of a revival. The rise of an exceeding great army. Neputakete prodiane suzaro. Rebuleche in the crudi. Mampeleketonia. I have many non Christians who apply for me to be their mentor in this nation. They lived and stood upon their feet and exceeding great army. Now, if you look at that scripture, it's a prophetic picture of a revival, an awakening, a spiritual awakening. Yes, <coughs> the end product is the emergence of giants of strange order 
an exceeding great army. You will not miss your place in it. Yeah. You will not miss your place in that way. Yeah. So engaging your heart in serving the Lord is what qualifies you and I to be listed among these rising giants. And their nobles shall be of themselves. And their governors shall come from the midst of them. For who is this has engaged his heart to seek unto me, saith the Lord. <laughs> so in advancing the kingdom of God is where lies your own and my own advancement. <laughs> seeking your heart and getting your heart and seeking after God is what entitles you or qualifies you and I to be listed among the imagined giants in a revival. It's not waiting out there, God has said, giant will arise. No. <laughs> Just like if you won't repent, you can't be saved. If you engage your heart, you can't be listed. If you will not engage your heart, you cannot be listed. If you will not engage your heart, you cannot be listed. May you never mistake the good for the perfect. God moves his people in faces. You move from the good to the acceptable, that is good, very good, and then to the perfect, which is excellent. Many just stopped at the good. They missed their place in the very good and cannot smell the realm of excellence. But that's where God is taking you to. Romans 12 and verse 2, to prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light, whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. <laughs> James 1 17. So the good will come before the perfect. Many have not even seen the good, sir. They are fled. <laughs> they are fled. They, 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 they say too much, they say too much, too much, too much. Have you not heard in James 5, 7? He said, the husband man James 5, 7 the word says be patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the Lord behold the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth and had long patience for it till he receives the early the literary long patience. <laughs> long patience. Long patience. And what is the effect of the former and the literary coming together? Hmm. I've given you the former rain model and come to come come down for you the rain, the former and the literary in the same month, and the flaws shall be full of wheat. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. And my people shall never. So you move to a point where <laughs> your decoration, your beautification, your glorification remains permanent shall never be ashamed. Never end of struggle. Never end of ups and downs. Never end of ups and downs. That's the realm your church succeeded to assess. Never. Amen. From three naira in a meeting, never. We kept moving and moving, unabated, undiscourageable, moving. 
are moving from six members, four members to six to ten to twenty. Never. Just keep going. You soon reach the point of never. Amen. 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 You soon reach a point of never. One billion devils can wipe the beauty of God on my life. No. I walked it. I kept it. He said, I've kept the faith. I kept it. I kept running with it. You get to a point of never. All this up and down is because you didn't get to that level. When you get to that level, it becomes a never verdict. A verdict of never. You are getting there. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. First Corinthians chapter 12. And verse 1, let's start. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away into deep, these dumb idols, even as you were fed. Wherefore, I give unto you to understand, I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God. Now, go to verse 4, please. Now, there are diversities of gifts of the Holy Spirit, but the same Holy Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. <laughs> but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with her. He now went to the last verse. Last verse, please. But covet earnestly the best gifts. That is, all the diversity of operations are accessible if you are interested. Diversities of operations. We've been talking about gifts of the Holy Spirit for long, but let's now move into the diversities of his operations. All of which are given for our profiting. Thank you, Jesus. Diversities of operations given for our profit. Number one, the spirit of faith. And we having the same spirit of faith. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. As it's written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. The spirit of faith is a speaking spirit. It speaks the unspeakable. Because it thinks the unthinkable. Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. <laughs> That's spirit of faith, my friend. You're talking against the fiery furnace as if they are playing with candlelight. Our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us. Nobody speaks naturally against fiery furnace. No. The spirit of faith had overwhelmed them. Our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us. And they will deliver from, from your hand. And even if it was not, whoop. Die if you want. We no bow. A speaking spirit. <laughs> and God delivered them because they trusted in their God. It's the spirit of faith that brings to the realm of trust. You won't shift. You just know what it is. Amen. Amen. You won't have to think of what to say. The spirit of your father is the one speaking in you. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible says, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. The spirit of faith has capacity to, to subdue nations. To subdue what? Nations. 
how we need that operation in these last days. According to scriptures, Daniel 7, 27, and all the kingdoms under heaven shall be given <laughs> to the sons of the Most High God. All the kingdoms under heaven. And through faith, they subdued kingdoms. So the spirit of faith is most relevant for this end times. The giants in the kingdom must possess of necessity the spirit of faith to take their place. They must possess the spirit of faith to take their place. What you find working here at night and day is the spirit of faith at work. Amen. Amen. The spirit of faith at work. We are just close to 14,000 new says now. Praise God for the year. The spirit of faith at work. Won't take no for an answer. So your church planted 10,000 churches, 10,404 churches in a year of lockdown and 1,300 across 35 other nations. Shame on the devil. Hallelujah. The spirit of faith is an unbending spirit. After the body was signed, the Bible said Daniel opened the windows to Jerusalem and prayed three times as he did at four times. You can't stop it. Now, I decree this morning a fresh endowment of the spirit of faith upon every one that sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Peter says, such as I have, I give unto you. I'm privileged to be endowed with the spirit of faith in undeniable dimensions. I therefore release a fresh endowment of the spirit of faith upon every one who understands my voice in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brand new day for you. Amen. Brand new day for you. Amen. Hebrews 11, 33. This giants through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, once valiant in, in fight, and turned to flight the armies of the aliens. That's the sweet of faith for you. Get you addicted to the truth of scriptures. You think what the world cannot think. And so you can say what the world cannot say. And the one who said it backs you up to deliver it. No more shall the enemy torment your life anymore. Yeah. You know what we call the shield of faith? The spirit of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith and you quench all the fiery darts of the devil. All the fear that threatens others. You quench and silence them. Ephesians 6 and verse 16. And that is available to every believer who truly converted. I saw it in Egan. I converted with all <laughs> converting. You can imagine. And I got it. I knew the day I got it. May today be your day. Yeah. Where you begin to operate in the reality of your future. <laughs> so you've been operating, operating in the reality, in the reality of, my of my future. Operating, operating. in the reality, in the reality. of my future. Operating, operating in the reality, in the reality. that is the spirit of faith for you. 